Hello, my name is John Lynch, Director of Engineering for Ferrite Products, and I'll be presenting Ferrite's High Frequency Power Magnetics Technology Roadmap. The market motivation being that miniaturization is one of the driving forces in design. As can be seen in the picture of the charger here, the magnetics is one of the largest components. Therefore, by increasing the frequency, you could reduce the component size, as can be seen in the LC filter here, going from 20 kilohertz up to 50 kilohertz. With silicon carbide and GAN technologies, higher frequencies can be supported. Silicon is good up to around 1 megahertz or so, silicon carbide going up to around 3 megahertz or so, and GAN beyond 10 megahertz. Ferrite now offers materials to support the full range of frequencies. Ferrite has had 79 and 67 materials covering frequencies up to around 1 MHz for 79 and 5 MHz for 67 material. 80 material was just recently developed to cover the gap from, one, from around 1 to 5 MHz. So as can be seen from the plot here, these materials now cover the full range of silicon, silicon carbide, and GAN technologies. 79 material is a 1400 perm manganese zinc material with an optimal frequency range of 300 to 750 kilohertz, performing well even up to a megahertz or so. It has been optimized for minimal losses at elevated temperatures. So as can be seen here where we are plotting power loss density over temperature for three frequencies and flux densities in the optimal frequency range of 300 kilohertz to 750 kilohertz. The power loss density is fairly stable and optimized around 80 degrees Celsius at 500 kilohertz, for example. Note all the graphs shown are measured on an 18 millimeter OD, 9.7 millimeter ID, and 6 millimeter height toroid. Here for 79 material, we are plotting power loss density versus flux density at 100 degrees Celsius at frequencies ranging from 100 kilohertz to 750 kilohertz. We have bolded the power loss density at 500 milliwatt per cc for reference as most designs will be below this. And you can see at 500 kilohertz for example you don't hit 500 milliwatt per cc until up around 85 millitesla. This performs very well compared to other similar competitor materials. Next we will take a look at ferrite's newly developed 80 material. 80 material is a lower 550 perm manganese zinc material with an optimal frequency range of 1 to 4 megahertz, performing well even up to around 5 megahertz. It also has a fairly stable temperature response. As can be seen here, where we are plotting power loss density over temperature for three frequencies and flux densities in the frequency range of 1 megahertz to 3 megahertz, the power loss density is fairly stable being lowest at 25 degrees C. Here for 80 material we are plotting power loss density versus flux density at 100 degrees Celsius at frequencies ranging from 1 megahertz to 3 megahertz. We have also bolded the power loss density at 500 milliwatt per cc for reference as we did on the 79 material. And you can see at 3 megahertz for example you don't hit 500 milliwatt per cc until up close to 30 millitesla. This performs very well compared to other similar competitor materials. For 79 and 80 material, we are currently offering a toroid ring kit, which essentially consists of three toroid sizes ranging from an OD of 9.6 millimeters to 29.6 millimeters for material evaluation purposes. For 79 material, we have several other toroid sizes available, and we are currently in the process of expanding the 80 material toroids. In addition, we have some planar ER and EQ cores available in 79 material and we'll soon have some planar cores available in 80 material. As we are adding these parts, if there is a different size or custom shape needed, we can do that too. We do a lot of custom cores. Next we will look at ferrite 67 material. 67 material is a lower 40 permeability nickel zinc material with an optimal frequency range of 5 to 20 megahertz performing well even beyond 20 megahertz. This material also has a fairly stable temperature response over its frequency range. As can be seen here where we are plotting power loss density over temperature 
at four frequencies and flux densities in the frequency range of 2 MHz to 15 MHz, the power loss density is fairly stable, being lowest at 25 degrees C. Note we are currently expanding our data for power loss at these higher frequencies. 67 material is a material Ferret has had for a long time, but only recently started publishing power loss curves. There is not a lot of data out there for power loss once you get into the megahertz frequencies. Ferrite worked with MIT on the high frequency power loss testing, and MIT has done a lot of work measuring a number of ferrite materials, including ferrite 67 material. And MIT's data also showed that in 5 to 20 megahertz frequency range, ferrite 67 was amongst the best. Here for 67 material, we're plotting power loss density versus flux density at 100 degrees C at frequencies ranging from 2 megahertz to 20 megahertz. We have also bolded the power loss density at 500 milliwatt per cc for reference, as we did on the other materials. And you can see at 10 megahertz, for example, you don't hit 500 milliwatt per cc until well over 10 millitesla. We currently offer engineers our 67 material high frequency mini power kit containing a number of toroids as well as EQ and I cores for evaluation. In addition, we have a number of other cores available, including other size toroids. We also, we are also looking at doing a kit in 79 and 80 materials. Next we will take, we will talk a little about core size and optimal frequency. Here we looked at three different size toroids in 80 material, ranging from a volume of 0.17 centimeters cubed to 2.89 centimeters cubed, and then plotted performance factor versus frequency. Performance factor is essentially a figure of merit. The higher the better the material performs, meaning lowest losses. It is the peak flux density times the frequency where the power loss density of the core is 500 milliwatt per cc at that frequency. So the higher the necessary flux density needed to reach 500 milliwatt per cc, the higher the performance factor. Here we see that all sizes are about the same in performance factor up until a little over a megahertz. As the size increases, we can see, one, the overall peak value is decreasing, and in addition, the peak frequency is dropping. We have seen similar performance on other materials. This is an area we are continuing, continuing to do some work, but the point is, is that for larger and larger sizes, you may not get the same performance as you would in a smaller core. For the same three toroids in the last graph, we also looked at mu prime and mu double prime versus frequency. And as expected, as the core size increases, we see mu double prime or losses shifting lower in frequency. So larger cores are lossier at higher frequency than the smaller cores. In this slide, we are demonstrating the dimensional effect we saw in the prior graphs. At 1 MHz, we compared two different size cores of 1.5 cubic centimeters and 2.89 cubic centimeters. We ran them both at 66 millitesla and compared the temperatures after stabilizing. We targeted 500 milliwatt per cc of the smaller core when determining the flux density. The cores were within about 7 degrees Celsius of each other once they stabilize, so very close. We then tested them at 4 megahertz and 22 millitesla, whereas can be seen from the right-hand graph, there is a little, there is a difference in performance factor, being lower on the larger core. So after stabilizing, the larger core was 23.5 degrees C, hotter than the smaller core running at the same frequency and flux density. To summarize, size should be considered especially when you start operating at higher frequencies. This is something we are continuing to gather data on. This last graph is plotting the performance factor of 79, 80, and 67 material. As can be seen here, 79 dominates on performance factor up to 500 kilohertz or so, then 80 material up to over 4 megahertz, and 67 material for the higher frequencies above 4 or 5 megahertz. So with existing ferrite 67 and 79 materials, 
and newly developed 80 material, Ferric now offers materials to support the full range of frequencies for silicon, silicon carbide, and GAN technologies.